Good morning on this Wednesday morning, and I trust you're all keeping safe. Our worship this morning is taken from the Church of England prayers for use during the coronavirus outbreak. And I'm going to focus upon the gospel reading taken from the lectionary for today. The homily may be of interest to those attending the Bible study this afternoon, so as it will also be focused upon the same reading taken from Luke chapter 11, verses 42 to 46. Now let us begin our worship. The Lord is good, a strong refuge when trouble comes. God is close to those who trust in him. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and for ever. Amen. So the reading is taken from Luke's Gospel, chapter 11, beginning to read at verse 42. But woe to you, Pharisees, for you tithe mint and rue and herbs of all kinds, and neglect justice and the love of God. It is these you ought to have practised without neglecting the others. Woe to you, Pharisees! For you love to have the seat of honour in the synagogues and to be greeted with respect in the marketplaces. Woe to you, for you are like unmarked graves and people walk over them without realising it. One of the lawyers answered him, Teacher, when you say these things, you insult us too. And he said, Woe also to you lawyers, for you load people with burdens hard to bear, and you yourself do not lift a finger to ease them. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So, what do we make of that? Well, I think that sometimes when we read the Bible, it's difficult for us to understand, because it was originally written by a society that's very different from ours, and also it often relates and refers to a culture that is Jewish-centric. So, let's try and interpret the words in today's Gospel reading. We hear the opening remark, But woe to you Pharisees! And it's easy to think that this could be vindictive, but the word woe was actually an expression of regret, and not of vindictiveness, with a meaning like, alas! In this reading, Jesus starts with references to the Jewish tithing practices. Tithing was an act of giving and was commanded in Leviticus and Deuteronomy, i.e. the Jewish law. It was meant to be a joyful offering of love, but this calculation of one-tenth of all stalks of garden herbs made a burdensome mockery of it. In truth, this level of detail was not required by the law, and the Mishnah expressly lays it down that Ru, which Jesus refers to, was exempt from the tithe. That's stated in Shebeth 9.1. The Pharisees were going beyond what was required, but when the people concentrated on the trivial, they tend to overlook the important. Jesus' concern was not in the fact that the herbs were tithed, but in their zeal for trivia. They neglected justice and the love of God. The point being that our attitude to God is what controls our actions. Jesus continues criticising the attitude of the religious leaders. He refers to the Pharisaic preoccupation with their outward appearance. They always wanted to be in the public eye. They wanted the best seats in the synagogue and to be seen as men of distinction. Meetings were marked with a show of deference and all this hindered rather than helped the ordinary people. Jesus then goes on to compare the Pharisees to graves which are not seen. To come into contact with a grave was to incur ceremonial defilement. And this is still the case today. Today, in a Jewish graveyard, in a graveyard chapel, 
you will find a glass partition between where the priest stands and where the deceased are. Jewish priests will avoid visiting hospitals to avoid coming into contact with death. In the Jewish churchyard, the graves of the priests and the priests' families, i.e. the Cohens, are at the edge of the main paths only to minimise them coming in close to the deceased. So, getting back to the Gospel reading, this is referring to the fact that some people were buried in unmarked graves and the unwary traveller could easily walk over such a grave and unwittingly contract ceremonial defilement. People who walked over unmarked graves became ceremonially unclean. And likewise, Jesus is saying that people who walked in the teaching and ways of the Pharisees became morally unclean. We now examine the reference to the lawyers. Lawyers were those who studied the Old Testament law, the religious men, and many were Pharisees. The passage suggests that the lawyers did not think that Jesus' words applied to them. The lawyer replies, you reproach us, you insult us. And Jesus responds by making it clear that through the law, they are equally guilty of making life difficult for the ordinary man. Jesus says that they ask others to do difficult things with no assistance given. The interpretation of the law and the traditions were difficult to follow, but were taken with their utmost seriousness. The Mishnah said that it was more important to observe the interpretations than the law itself. Jesus believed that the lawyers ought to have explained God's law in such a way that it helped and inspired people rather than making it a wearisome, wearisome burden. So, to give a better understanding of what Jesus was concerned with, I'll give you an example. On the Sabbath, they taught that a man may not carry a burden in his right hand or in his left, in his bosom or on his shoulder, but he may carry it on the back of his hand or with his foot, or with his mouth, or with his elbow, or in his ear, or in his hair, or in his mouth, or in his wallet, carried mouth downwards, or between his wallet and his shirt, or in the hem of his shirt, or in his shoe, or in his sandal. That was Sabbath 10.3. So imagine trying to live with rules like that, and now multiply that by all the regulations of the law that there were, and you begin to appreciate how difficult it was for the ordinary man to know what to and not to do. But I haven't mentioned the best bit yet. There were also a multitude of loopholes for a lawyer who knew the traditions to enable him to do pretty well what he wished. In summary, Jesus was being critical to these passages, not of the Jewish law, but of the way that they were presented and interpreted. By concentrating on the minutiae, they were missing the important message of God. With the Pharisee leaders being so preoccupied with their own self-importance, they were not caring and loving leaders, not being good shepherds of their flock. It's interesting to note how Pope Francis, in his apostolic exhortation, Evangelii Gordia, he implores church leaders to pastor their flocks in such a way that they have the smell of the sheep wafting from their garments. This is how the Pharisee leaders should have behaved. It is about radical accompaniment. Jesus was criticising the Pharisees for being more concerned with their own status rather than caring for the flock and helping them to build a proper relationship with God. But this is a message for us all. All who profess to be Christians 
should strive for a deep relationship with God. Jesus used that palpable and relatable image of the Good Shepherd when referring to himself. Sheep know and trust their shepherd, and shepherds know and love their sheep. Amen. So let us pray. Loving Father, we worship you and we thank you for calling us and allowing us to serve you. Loving Father, we thank you for all the privileges and gifts that we enjoy, though we often forget that we only enjoy them with your grace. We ask that you make us ever mindful of those who are less fortunate. We pray for all in need at this time, the hungry, the thirsty, the sick, the bereaved, the persecuted, the bullied, the poor, those who have lost their freedom, all who are in need. We ask that you relieve their suffering and bring your healing touch, and that you will give compassion, strength, perseverance and courage to all who care and help those in need. Heavenly Father, we ask that you help those involved in the Brexit talks to find a mutually beneficial agreement to maintain harmony with our neighbours. We pray for integrity and honesty in all our leaders in the world to do what they what is necessary in our name. Heavenly Father, we ask for your help during this time of pandemic to be patient respectful and considerate towards others so that we comply with those constraints which are necessary to contain the virus. We look forward to returning to normality in the future. Loving Father, we pray for all who have recently died and those loved ones still in the forefront of our memories. We pray that they are in your heavenly embrace and are at peace. Heavenly Father, we pray for peace in your world, that harmony may be found through compromise, wisdom and unselfish negotiations, rather than through conflict, suffering and war. Loving Father, we give you thanks for all that you do for us. Merciful Father, Accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And I now invite you to say the Lord's Prayer with me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Now we come to the God's blessing. The Lord bless you and preserve you from all evil and keep you in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Keep safe and God bless.